Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dill here. So it's been a very hot week here in Southern California. I think today it reached about almost 90 degrees. Um, so I haven't really done a lot of gardening. Uh, honestly, I've just been kind of lazy this week. I don't know if you guys ever had those types of weeks where you just really don't want to do anything. Um, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to answer some of the, um, your questions um, about uh, you know some of the plants that I have um, and the pots that I have I know a lot of you guys have been asking me where I get my pots um, there's been a lot of questions about the wagon <laughs> um, so uh, I uploaded a video of uh, the garden tour about a couple of weeks ago um, and a lot of you guys have been asking about this plant um, which is called a uh, monstera deliciosa uh, so I've had this plant about three years ago um, and it didn't have any of the fenestrations. Um, it actually didn't start um, getting fenest uh, fenestrations until about last year. It finally matured enough to start doing that. Um, and when I got it, it was just, you know, it only had three leaves and it was very small. The leaves were like this small. And I intended to keep it indoors, but for some reason, I'm not really sure why, uh, I decided to plant it out here along with some syngoniums and ferns. And the pot that it's in is actually uh, the same pot as this one. Uh, it's a 15 inch diameter, uh, so it's not that big, um, but it seems to love it. You know, these types of plants really love to be root bound. Um, as you can tell, I mean, it's just growing like mad. I mean, look at the new leaf on this one. It's just like three times as big as my head. So it just seems to love it. I may have to repot it uh, next year. Um, maybe even uh, the end of summer. I'm not really sure. I, I just have to keep an eye on it But for now it just seems very happy where it is so and this side of the house this side of the garden actually this that's our kitchen um, door gets shade um, uh, Pretty much all day uh, It's about six o'clock in the evening right now. So it, that's this is um, Basically the all the light that it gets throughout the day um, but it's loving this area there's a uh, we have four huge ficus um, trees on the, my left side, on your right. So, but yeah, it just loves this area. It's been growing like a monster. So, and I've actually been giving my friends cuttings of this uh, just to kind of, you know, keep it like, I guess, tamed some, somewhat. So I, I garden in zone 10B in Los Angeles. So this type of plant, so it's a very mild climate, so this, plant can actually stay outside all year long but if you live in a maybe a, a colder climate you may have to protect this during winter time um, but yeah I mean it's just a great plant to have it's huge I love the fenestration the leaves on these are just beautiful so definitely if you guys could get your hands on one of these I highly recommend it so a lot of you guys have been asking what um, type of planter this is so this is actually not a planter this is actually our old cooler uh, that we've had forever uh, it's probably one of the uh, first purchases that we made when we first moved into this house about eight years ago and I love this uh, cooler I mean I love the wooden um, outside of it uh, it's got stainless steel inside um, it's got a, um, a drainage hole already built in um, so last year uh, we thought it was time to replace it since it's so old um, but instead of throwing it away I thought you know it would be such a waste for us to just I don't know toss it so I thought I'd turn it into a planner um, I, all I did was I put a piece of wood um, right where the lid is that way it doesn't close in itself um, and you know kill whatever plant um, that I decide to plant on this thing and you could and I made this lid this part of the lid um, actually a chalkboard because um, last year I actually planted a bunch of um, herbs on here so and um, vegetables actually so last year I planted uh, Napa grape tomato I planted basil habanero dill oregano um, uh, but this year I decided to plant some annuals uh, I got some hookahs in there and I have um, you know just impatience um, and yeah you know I always think that you know if you could uh, drill a hole um, onto something you could turn it into a planter I love uh, you know just the natural patina of the wood and how um, it kind of just aged over time uh, we don't really protect it during winter time so um, you know it's just out here with all the elements it gets rained on it gets uh, um, you know uh, sunned on so um, 
But yeah, I mean, it's created this amazing, nice patina on it. And I just think it just looks so charming. I mean, it was just a perfect, um, I don't know, perfect planter, I guess, right? Um, and it has a beer opener, so <laughs> it's great for parties anyway. <laughs> and from all the trees that we have in our properties, uh, we probably get asked about this tree the most uh, from our friends and from you guys. And, you know, I mean, I can see why this tree just looks crazy. It looks like it could probably kill you and it probably can if you're, you get close enough to it. Uh, it's called a silk floss tree. Uh, so this one is actually a really fast growing tree if you let it, uh, if you planted it on the ground. It's um, hardy uh, from zones 9 through 11. Um, and we have actually seen uh, a mature tree of uh, this variety um, that is at least about 80 feet tall to seven feet wide. So they can get really big. Um, so we obviously don't have it on the ground because we don't have the space for it to get that big. We actually have it potted right now. Um, and believe it or not, we actually fit this, um, when we got it about six years ago, we actually fit this in our, um, in our Prius. <laughs> um, obviously it wasn't this big. Um, it probably was uh, maybe up to the very first branch and it wasn't this thick when we first got it. So, and it wasn't uh, mature enough to flower and it finally flowered for us uh, last year. So we were very happy. We felt like really proud parents and you know, when you, when you take care of a plant for that long and finally see it mature, uh, mature enough to flower, I think, you know, it's, it's a, you get one of those proud parent moments. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's such a cool looking tree. Um, I almost kind of, you know, it reminds me of uh, Jack and a Beanstalk a little bit. Uh, I almost kind of want, I almost kind of see Jack climbing up these little spikes, climbing all the way up to, you know, what a giant is, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's a really fun tree. Um, I would be very careful where I plant it though. Uh, you know, we have it right next to our jacuzzi. So, and we have uh, planters all around it. So whenever we have our, you know, nieces and nephews around, they don't really, aren't very close enough, um, you know, to get poked from it. I, we actually never had anybody get poked for it, from it, uh, surprisingly. So, but yeah, it's a beautiful tree. Um, and uh, we are, <laughs> Me and my partner actually we were just talking about how we're going to repot this thing because I mean obviously I don't think we could just grab it by our hands. I think we're gonna have to um, break the pot, unfortunately. But you know what? That's a small price to pay for um, for this tree, so we're willing to do that. But I don't think we have to do that for another couple of years, maybe. Hopefully, uh, the pot that it's in is actually. Uh, a set pot that we got from um, uh, a pot manufacturer in um, in Carson, which is about I don't know 20 uh, miles away from where we live. Um, I think it's called Pottery MFG, if I'm not um, mistaken. So, um, so if you live in the LA area, um, I highly recommend going to that place. They really have a huge selection of pots. Um, and they're very fairly priced. So um, a lot of our big pots actually we get from there. Um, so yeah, uh, it's called a silk floss tree and it's a beautiful tree. And if you guys can get your, you know, your hands in one, uh, definitely uh, do it. All right, so I think it's time to talk about this guy behind me. <laughs> um, I got my friend Chippy here next to me. Um, so when my friends come over, uh, this, this wagon is probably uh, the one thing in our garden that makes people just kind of like their jaws drop they you know it's kind of like a surprise thing that they don't expect to uh, see in an LA garden um, so and I get a lot of questions about this thing um, where I get it um, how do we get it into the garden so um, so we got this wagon about a couple of years ago um, and we weren't planning on getting uh, a wagon not this type of wagon anyway I was looking through um, Pinterest and I've seen these um, pictures of people um, taking vintage uh, wagons you know those kind of like the radio flyer ones and turning them turning them into um, into planters and so I thought that was just a neat idea and I really wanted to do something similar uh, for the front yard and so one day I just decided to Google um, a wagon, vintage wagon, and this thing popped up. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. What is that? So I click on the link um, 
and um, you know just right away I was just like wow that is one amazing wagon um, and it just turns out that um, an antique store in Long Beach California uh, again about like maybe 20 22 miles away from where we live um, actually had it um, so but you know I kept telling myself that there's no way I can I can have a wagon like that it's just way too big I was like that we can't fit it anywhere um, I definitely can't put it in the front yard that would just be kind of weird right um, so you know I just turned off turned off the computer um, but I kind of obsessed about it for two weeks for two weeks I obsessed about it I checked up on it every single day you know um, uh, to see whether or not somebody else had uh, purchased it um, after two weeks of obsessing about it I finally called uh, the antique store and asked if they still had the wagon and they said yeah so I actually tricked my um, partner into um, coming with me to check it out uh, he had no idea uh, why we were going there for I've never um, spoken about the wagon um, so he was going in there blindly uh, so I remember driving um, you know on the on our way to uh, to see the wagon I, I was showing him pictures about it. I was like you know isn't this cool isn't this wagon really cool and he was like oh yeah that is a really cool wagon and then I kind of just snuck up in there. I'm like, well, that's the wagon we're going to go see right now. And he goes, why do you want to go see that wagon? And I was like, because I want it for the garden. And the look in his face, I could have sworn it. I think he wanted to like stop in the middle of driving in the freeway and throw me out the car. <laughs> and I don't blame him. Um, but anyway, we, so we get there. And I remember we get to the parking lot. And the very first thing you see is this wagon. And it was like love at first sight. I just knew I had to have it. Um, I didn't know where I was going to put it, um, I didn't know how we were going to bring it home, but I knew I just had to have this wagon. I mean, it was just, um, I mean, it's just, I just fell in love with it, you know? I just had this gut feeling that it was just going to be this amazing thing that um, we can have in our garden. Um, so I somehow convinced them to um, let me have it. But it actually comes apart, so it comes in four, um, four different pieces. So the canopy is one piece, the wheels come off, and then there's the axle, and it barely fit. This canopy barely fit into our gate. I think there was maybe like maybe half an inch gap on both sides, so we almost couldn't fit it in um, our back garden. So, but anyway, so we finally got it in. I was like, looking through it, and there's actually these sketches on the side of, um, on the side of the wagon that looked a little bit of Chinese so I did a Google search and I found out that this is actually um, like a vintage um, Chinese marriage cart that people used to get um, married in so I just thought that was really cool and now it's just one of those pieces that you know we can't uh, imagine our garden um, without so a lot of you guys have also been asking about the display right here um, so I actually did not plan to put anything on this side of our garden. Um, so this is right off uh, the left side of our fire pit area. So the, we have the wagon on my right. Uh, so this would be on our left. Um, but you know, we were driving um, around the block one day and we noticed that somebody were, was throwing away this um, side, side table right here. And I really liked the designs of it. I thought it was uh, just very unique and it was in good shape. I mean, it didn't have a top. But it was like it was like pure metal and it was kind of like rusty which i kind of love i you know i love vintage um rusty thing so we took it home and i really didn't know what to do with it but i decided to put it here you know i just i thought that maybe i could just put all my pots and whatnot on top of it and my partner did build um a new top for it and i just really like the way it looks um, and then I just remembered that we had these trellises and old trellises um, uh, from a long time ago, back in when I was in college, that I had displayed in my old apartment that I wasn't using anymore. So I decided to put those up here and I just, and the whole thing kind of just made sense, you know? Uh, I did paint, you know, the side table and the trellis all gold. And the reason I did that, and I'm not a gold person, I'm not a jewelry type of person, um, but I painted it gold because this side of the garden actually gets um, morning light. So I wanted it to reflect uh, the morning um, light. I wanted this whole side of the garden to just shine like, like a gold, <laughs> you know. Um, 
and it does every single morning this is one of the things that i love i love it when um the sun hits it because it just glows this whole thing just glows just gold and it's just one of the most romantic thing um uh you know in our garden so um and this bird cage we got from an estate sale i have a dios korea elephant piece elephant paste i don't know how to say that uh growing inside of it um and then i just have uh, a pink jasmine growing to the trellis and i just think it's just so beautiful you know it, it has that kind of kind of um street secret garden feel to it um got these jars and the candlestick from uh home goods so yeah it's just very simple you know um it's not really in your face it's one of those things that you know um it isn't it's gold but it isn't it isn't flashy if that makes sense um have ferns growing underneath it uh boxwood hedge so yeah i mean it's you know these types of things in the garden really um, creates this romantic feel of the garden. So if you could bring kind of like this antique, um, I think anything that you bring that looks kind of antique into the garden kind of makes that garden look more romantic. So yeah, so and I, this is one of my favorite um, uh, thing in the garden now. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys um, that you guys have been asking about are these two pots that we have in our front garden. Um, and a lot of you guys have been asking me where to good, where to find good cheap pots. And I always tell, I always tell as, as many people as I can to go check out estate sales. And this is where we got uh, these pots from. And the reason why estate sales are so good at, um, um, for finding really good cheap pots is because when people go to estate sales, they, you know, they are looking at furnitures, interior furnitures, outdoor furnitures, but no one has, no one ever asked about the pots. And so a lot of people don't even know that they're for sale. Um, and that's exactly, uh, you know, how we were able to get a hold of these pots. We were the only ones who asked about the pots. Um, when we got there, so it was a three day sale and we went there on the last day when they were just about to wrap up. Um, and the very first price that they gave us was, you know, kind of insane. Um, but probably pretty fair, but we weren't willing to pay for that much for these pots. Um, but as we were walking out, they actually uh, ran after us and asked us if we wanted to take both of them for $15 each. So we actually got both of these terracotta pots, huge, nice terracotta pots for $30 at an estate sale. So again, if you guys can go to an estate sale or even a garage sale, definitely go and check them out it's definitely worth it um and you could really find like just treasures you know at a state sale so and these are exactly proof i mean you know when if you go to places i mean these could go for like hundreds of dollars so yeah for 15 dollars definitely worth going um but anyway you guys uh it's actually starting to get pretty late so um, I'm sorry, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I hope um, I was able to answer some of your questions. Um, I'm hoping to do more of these things. I know you guys have a lot of questions about um, a lot of these things that I post. So, um, but yeah, thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.